Hi, um, I'm Linda McDonald, and uh, I want to introduce my good friend, uh, M. Louise Stanley, also known as Lulu. And I'd love for her to talk about her early life and her early art influences. OK. Hi, Linda. <laughs> um, to, to begin with, um, my I came from a family of artists and musicians, and my dad was a painter. And every Friday or every uh, weekend, our family would go on a Sunday drive and we would all paint. And my dad did landscape watercolors. And um, by his side, I learned all the tricks to the trade. And uh, he taught me how to, uh, he taught me about casting shadows and perspective. And uh, later when I started teaching, uh, I used all of those things that he taught me. It, um, so I, I learned my lessons well. Uh, I went to a, a four year church, Brethren Church College in Laverne, it was Laverne College, Laverne, California. And I got pulled in by the Dean of Women for having nudes on my wall, on my dorm wall. I had been taking classes at Scripps College. I got a little motor scooter and would go back and forth and take life drawing classes. And when the Dean pulled me in, I realized that my religion was art and not what they were teaching. And uh, then later I moved to uh, Northern California and uh, enrolled in uh, California College of Arts and Crafts. And that was a real relief. I was with my own kind. <laughs> and uh, at uh, Arts and Crafts, when I, when I arrived, my idea of art was landscapes, still lives, and nudes. And I was very confused because uh, the students were all doing these wild, crazy drawings out of their heads. And I, I didn't know who, who to be. Um, I was embarrassed by my classical drawing style and, and, and the skills that I had. I didn't realize they were on acid or smoking dope <laughs> and uh, channeling uh, from another another realm. But um, when I when I was in graduate school, I got together after after our seminars with three women, and we would go up into the Oakland graveyard next door, and. Um, take our paints and get stoned and um, rebel. What, what year was this, Lulu? This was 1968, 69, uh -huh. around. And, um, but at, at the time, if you had to, be, if you wanted to be serious, uh, a serious artist, you had to work big, you, you had to be an expression, abstract expressionist. It was right. kind of the tail end of that. Mm -hmm. And so you couldn't use color. You couldn't use humor. You couldn't tell a story. It couldn't be personal. It had to be big oil paint, paint with your whole arm. And the only way that we could rebel was to do little tiny watercolors, <laughs> composed of little watercolors. And these paintings behind me I did in the graveyard uh, uh, behind the school. And we, we set out to do what we called bad art. And for me, I was trying to get back to a point uh, and draw like a child without this knowledge. It's hard and to this do. Was this was before bad art was uh, an art movement too. Right, no, we, call we called what we were doing bad bad art. It wasn't bad, bad painting. It was bad art. And right. um, at the time at Arts and Crafts, in the late 60s, your mark was had to be your own. And you had to develop a, a style of painting that you could call your own and nobody else's. And right. uh, 
that was hard for me because I didn't, I really didn't have a feeling of, uh, I painted what I saw and not how I felt about what I saw. Uh -huh. and that was my biggest quest, was trying uh -huh. to figure out how to talk about my world um, but on my terms. And I found that by distorting the figure and caricature, um, I could talk more about who that person was rather than what the person looked like. The right. flavor of a, the memory of a person after they've left the room. Uh -huh. So it was all from your mind. All of a sudden you weren't looking at things the way you had been before. Was that true? Well, I was, I was trying to, <laughs> to do that. I, I, painting has always been very hard. I make it very hard for myself. Uh-huh, right. And I don't know why I look at these and they seem rather free, but <laughs> every square inch was, uh -huh. you know, compulsively applied. <laughs> Great. So um, let's see, how did the women's movement in the 70s um, affect your art or how did you interact with the uh, women's movement? Okay, well, I... Uh, I joined a, a women's consciousness group. I, I uh, met a, a fellow artist, Judith Lanares, and um, I, I, uh, I liked her work. And I went to her studio and I said, I want to be your friend. <laughs> and I had my little stack of watercolors. And uh -huh. she said, you know, I have to go to this meeting. It's a woman's meeting and I don't want to go alone. Do you want to go with me? Mm -hmm. And that's really, that was our women's group. And it, it ended up uh, nine women, all artists. We met around 6.30 in the evening until two in the morning, kicking and screaming. And after the first month, uh, a friend from New York came to visit us and she said, you're not doing this right. You're, you, you need the list of topics. Yeah. Sounds like art rules or the art police. <laughs> well, there were rules for getting along. Oh, <laughs> and we, mm -hmm. we had some people in the group that were, it was competitive. Yeah, and, right. Uh, so we, we had to go back to basics and talk about one of the topics was, what do you need from a friend? How mm -hmm. do you, how, um, talking about how do you feel about other women, competition, jealousy, who does the housework, right. things like that. Mm -hmm. And then once we, once we did that, then we, then we could talk about art. And we, our group and a, a sister group in the city started, uh, we, we would have monthly meetings where we'd invite other people to join their own groups. We started a lot of groups. And then um, hmm. I think the first time I had to talk about my work was a, a trip we made down to Fresno to the women's program uh -huh. that Rita Yokoi and Judy Chicago had started. And uh, our whole group went down and we talked about our work. And then Judy Chicago and Miriam had started the school in Valencia, the women's program in Valencia. Was that Miriam, Miriam Shapiro? Miriam Shapiro. Shapiro, okay. And Judy Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they invited, they came to our studio mm -hmm. and uh, they visited a lot of our studios and they were sort of blown away by the, the work we were doing that was really kind of the classic women's work. Uh, we were still mm. working in our kitchens and, uh, but so they invited us to, uh, come to the women's, uh, let's see, it was the, the it was the big uh, conference. Uh, ah, can't think of the name, but it was at, at Valencia. And, oh, at the uh, school, uh-huh. And in the meantime, we, uh, we had gotten together a group of the San Francisco Bay Area women's groups, uh -huh. had gotten together a slide registry that was housed at the Art Institute. And any woman who wanted to could put four slides, a uh -huh. resume and a statement. 
and house it there. And anyone coming in to the uh, looking for women's work, we'd send them over to the registry. So we showed that slide registry to the women's conference, uh -huh. and uh, it just it, they made us go through through the slides twice. Wow, they were great. really blown away. And uh, I think the reason our work was able to be so eclectic and just kind of all over the place was we didn't have a uh, an art scene up here. We didn't have a gallery system, at least the women mm. weren't involved, allowed to show in it. And so we could work out of our own needs. We, we didn't have mm -hmm. to do art that sold. <laughs> we well, that's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> I like that. Uh, so do you think, so it sounds like you were a rebel from the beginning and... Um... Well, <laughs> I, I always felt that if I painted out of my own needs and if I said it, they couldn't get me. And yeah. then if I, if I, I always knew that my work didn't fit in anywhere. And I, there was a, a, a safety in that because um, uh, I would never be an ism that would be out. <laughs> I would yeah. always be on the outskirts. Right. Well, you could be a leader and be creating this kind of imagery. So yeah, when well, did the term <laughs> uh, narrative <laughs> art start? Did, when did the term a uh, narrative art uh, have anything to do with you? Was narrative? Yeah, narrative well, telling stories. Narrative was, <laughs> narrative was sort of a no no. Right, right. But yeah. I, when I was in graduate school, if I knew the paintings I'm doing now, uh -huh. I would have I would be I would have been horrified. Oh <laughs> I was deathly afraid of becoming a photorealist. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, photorealism. Yeah. Okay, so your work, how would you describe um, what you were doing in the 70s? Um, how, when you look back now, how can you, how do you talk about that period of work? I mean, it might go into the 80s a little bit, but. Uh, well, it was narrative, whether I like <laughs> it or not. Uh -huh. um, and it was watercolor. And oh. the nature of the medium allowed me to sit, it was portable. And uh -huh. I could sit, sit huddled over it. I could work in the graveyard. I could work in my studio, anywhere I went with uh, my family on vacations and, and all, we'd all take our paints. Uh, the aha moment for me uh, was when I started teaching in 1973 I had to pull out all those classical uh, techniques. And, and I have, of course, I had to start using them in my work. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was I could, I could take contrast the, the classical um, casting shadows and all reflected light in shadows. I could contrast that with the uh, stylization and the kind of uh, caricature that I was doing. And I could put those odd, crazy figures in a realistic landscape or situation. And I got kind of a uh, double whammy. I got a um, sort of a, well, what's, I can't think of the word. Um, well, yeah, a, you made it more, you made the, uh, the fantasy real by putting it in these real. Right real settings and then they're uh, more approachable because you might see them. Right. right. And how would you say that uh, the work that you're doing now was has been affected by your early work? And maybe you could talk about some of the themes of the work that you're doing now and if it started from your early themes. Well, I think juxtaposition is something that I've worked with for a long time. Mm -hmm. Contrasting two uh, opposites. Mm -hmm. So I and I like I like using classical themes as mm -hmm. a way to uh, sort of monumentalize the trivial. Uh -huh. And so I, 
I often like Juno and Zeus make better copy than the family next door neighbor's family squabble. Uh, and so often what what I started doing, I didn't really study the classics in school, mm -hmm. but um, from going to museums and looking at art, I would see a painting I liked that was a classical theme like Jupiter and Eo. And then I go to my Edith Hamilton and various books and read the myth. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and in the different readings, I would pick up clues of uh, how I could maybe transfer that to modern day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bring it into the, the present. Uh, but I like that. I like the idea of aging my people. Like I would, people used to say, well, have you ever done a painting with punks? And oh, I, right. you know, I go back further and I always felt that like my, the idea of the perfect woman was my mother in the forties. Cause uh -huh. that's when I started thinking about what is a woman. And, um, and also, I like the stylization of the clothes. That the mm, extreme, yeah. The, the 40s had a lot of extreme. But when you go back 10 years, it's old fashioned. Mm -hmm. When you go back 20 years, it's become sort of retro. Uh -huh. And earlier than that, it becomes historical. Right. And then you start uh, connecting with art history and the past. Right. And then it becomes modern somehow. Yeah. Well, yeah, people have to accept it. <laughs> or new, or new. <laughs> if it right. still works and it's that old, then okay, maybe it is, it exists. <laughs> right, right. In the future. And so, um, but you're painting in acrylics now. Uh, maybe you could talk about, um, you know, why you're painting in acrylics and you're doing gouache also. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, in 1989, I became allergic to my oil paints. Mm. And I had just started working in oil seven years before. And uh, I moved from, from watercolor to oil because the paper started getting bad in the 80s. Oh, there was uh -huh. a plague on the rabbit population. Uh, and they used rabbit skin glue to size the paper. And so I moved to oil and then I got a grant with, which was uh, the Flyshacker grant, $1,250 oh. a month. Wow. And I never left my studio for a year. Mm -hmm. And after a year, I was, I was uh, allergic to oil paints. Oh, so I moved to acrylic. Uh -huh. And it's, I have a love-hate relationship with acrylic, but I've managed to fake it uh -huh. enough so that uh, people think I work in oil. A curator one time came to my studio and the last thing he said before he left was, too bad these aren't oil. Uh, well, don't I listen to him. Ew, ew. <laughs> okay, how about uh, some ending um, thoughts or statements, Lulu? Ending thoughts. Right, yeah, we're well, near the end of our talk. Right, uh, well, I hope, I'm, I'm wanting to do hopeful paintings uh-huh and I, it's hard to paint about life when you don't have one and during during covid, COVID i right. work a lot in my sketchbooks and uh -huh. get ideas and uh so i just hope that i can keep keep working and uh, my dad always said you're not gonna die if you have a half finished painting on the easel <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you so much <laughs> Okay. You're welcome, Linda. <laughs>